Things that you need to actually make videos for your classes. Now, me, I use several different items. Now, the number one thing that you have to have is a camera. Now, you don't have to have a big fancy DSLR um, like the one that I'm shooting with. You, you don't need that. The reason that you don't need that is because that's just, it makes everything look a lot better, looks a lot prettier, but it's not a necessity. I use my phone for years. Uh, different types uh iphone does have a better kind of working camera um but here's the thing if you have android android has typically better hardware the stuff the guts of the phone itself work better however apple has better software things work better consistently with them with what you're comfortable with now i had a point and shoot that i started doing this long time ago get back to work <laughs> a simple point and shoot camera that shoots HD video is kind of the only necessity thing that you really need. Uh, and you want the HD so that you have a high pixel count so that as it blows up on a medium board or wherever the students are watching their films, they can see a good uh, high res polished image, especially for art people. We need to see something with, uh, with lots of detail to it. That's one of those imperative things. Now, after you have a camera, the second thing that you need, you have to have, is uh, some sort of editing software. Now, if you have the Chromebook, um, these things you can edit on them. There's a couple programs that I'll talk about uh, with you guys, but it's it's not really a good option, <laughs> but it does, you can do it. Uh, the other thing, and I use this for years when I started out working, which was uh, Windows Movie Maker that is built into all Windows PCs, it is a, it is, you go down to like start, just type in Movie Maker, it'll, you'll find the icon, click on that, make it. Uh, Windows Movie Maker is great, it's just, it's a glorified PowerPoint, that's all it is, there's no, um, no real, there's no real frill to it, it's just kind of, here's the, the sequence, this is the image, this is the sound, that's done, you can't really jazz it up, can't make it really interesting. Now me, I've upgraded past that to where I'm using uh, Premiere Pro, which is a no, no, uh, Adobe product. It's not easy, it, but once you start editing and you know how the process of it works, it's not that bad. Uh, there are some, there's still some hiccups. I know that when I'm editing things that I have or the issues I run into, but it's, it's, a, it's by far the industry standard of what you edit on. Now there's other freeware that's out there that you can do perfectly fine. Um, that's similar to Premiere, but it's not as polished as that, which is uh, DaVinci Resolve, which I like a lot because it's like the best color grading if I want to make um, everything like color jump in. Uh, I can do that on there. However, it is uh, it is freeware. Uh, you can buy a pro version. There is a pro version that gives you a couple uh, added features, but it's not a necessity. They're, they're, they're fun to have, but it's not it's not a make or break. There's also HitFilm and Lightworks. Now the problem with uh, HitFilm uh, hit is actually uh, really good, it's free. Uh, haphazard to download, I will say that. It wasn't an easy download, but it, it got, it, it worked. Um, Lightworks is really good, uh, but you have to know what, what editing is like really well to even make that even functional because uh, the menus, everything is kind of, hidden it's not easy to find stuff especially if you're if you're newbie to to editing don't don't try it at all it, it'll you'll you'll completely be turned away and you never want to do it again also um if you get a chance and you and you got and you got some editing under your belt and you want to give it a go give it a go um but camera software computer something to edit on those are the main things that you need now things that make life a lot easier DSLR is one because I like to uh, I like to dress up my image. I like to work with that and I'll uh, make sure I got a good image. Some sort of planner because as I'm working and as I'm coming up with new ideas and videos, I'll put jot notes down in my book. Uh, like I need to shoot this video today. I need to work on this video today. Uh, videos that are upcoming that I need to work on because my students are going to have questions or I'm going to be out of the building. Which, the case in point, I'm making a few. Same with, on my channel. I have several sub note videos. The reason I have those are because this is a whole lot easier for the students to learn than. Um, them writing me an email or trying to come up with a sub plan this is a lot easier it's 
takes me about 20 minutes to make the film, edit the film, and upload the film, and I'm done. But I've got it down to a science now, so it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, after you have some, some notes down what you're gonna actually start making, then you're gonna start thinking about storage. Now, for me, storage is a constant issue because I make so many films, I make so much stuff, uh, pictures and video and drone stuff, um, which is another fun tool we'll get to in a second. Um, so having a portable storage device, uh, this is a four, this is a four terabyte hard drive, external hard drive that I use, I can take around me. This is my newest one. Um, I have butchered old hard drives from old computers and I use these to store videos and stuff on to, to have as much backup as possible. Um, and the reason that you store stuff is because sometimes you'll have a class that you taught and you need to just refine. So you'll be refining what you created. However, you're not making something uh, completely fresh and new. So you can just kind of edit what you already did. And I always have two backup drives of all videos that I created so that if I need them, I can go back and get them. Now I try and not to delete the base uh, video that I shoot. So this raw version, now the raw version of the video, I try not to, um, I, I like to have a copy of it if I can. Uh, most of the time I can go ahead and trash it because I know I'm not gonna have to tweak what I've already gotten uh, that I've already edited out. Just because there's a lot of uh, and uh, and uh, are, uh, what am I gonna, um, talk about, talk about, now, talk now, about now. Uh, that part happens. These things happen while you're doing it, while you're doing the shoot, and that's fine. That's why you need editing software. Otherwise, the students are like, there's something wrong with you. And that's happened. Uh, I had a video that I uploaded recently that I was re watching, and I haven't watched in like a year or so, and realized I didn't edit that. So it's me like throwing stuff on the table because I, my space, no come in here. Was frustrated in the shoot and I just didn't get stuff done. Having all of these things that you had to, that you either purchase or you have, those are things that are, that are awesome. Uh, also, oh, forgot, uh, tripods. Now tripods, I try and keep at least a couple of these things. Uh, I have my uh, Gobi, my Gorilla Pod, which I use for if I'm outside doing shoots. Uh, but then my trusty normal tripod, so you can see that there is a ton of clay. There's a ton of clay all over this one from when I'm doing ceramics. Try and use something that you can clean easily. Dust is a big problem uh, for me in my classroom. So when you're cleaning and using stuff, make sure you got stuff, something that you can clean your equipment with. Uh, to finally having to make your own uh, pieces. So this one I made a long time ago because I didn't have cool, awesome tripods that I could do an inversion shot. So I made a little stand that I could put books onto the back side of it and then use my phone and like a little arm to just a normal bit of wire that I could post my phone into like so and draw underneath it so that I had that aerial shot to where I knew what I was getting I could easily see in there and click to focus and make sure all my stuff was lined up. Really handy to have when you're working for, when you're doing drawing videos. But that's kind of the basics of the stuff that you need. Now, if you wanna uh, make your own video, I would suggest getting just a little bit of the bare equipment, going out, try out a few shots. It's gonna be um, like pulling teeth the first couple times because things go wrong and you have to be aware of them. And, but uh, give it a go, it's fun, it's good, it's, it's interesting, and the kids definitely enjoy it and use it, and it benefits them greatly. I've not found a student who, I've taught one video, I've taken one video that I've shot, I know how I talk, I know how I, how I teach. I've taught that same exact lesson from kindergartners through 12th grade with pretty much the same results. Uh, the example that I did with all those was drawing the human form and the human face. Now the human face, I had to modify it. I think I muted it because when I talk, I know I talk more towards a um, more advanced and older audience. So I had to mute it and just kind of talk over myself uh, for the little kids because there's certain words that they're not gonna understand, certain things that they're not gonna get. So modify it accordingly. But to have something that is one tool that can be used with that wide of a spectrum, is invaluable. It's just something that I, I strongly urge uh, all teachers that I work with, that I come in contact with, if, they're, if they see my videos and have questions on my videos, I push them and say, you need to do this. This is the way of the future. This is how we grow, how we evolve as, as educators. 
so keeping it at that at that forefront is imperative. All right, so let's let's go do something else. Yeah.